So it's a great day for the Bucks, as well as Bucks fans, because you get to stop hearing people like me speculate on what your guy is going to do. Giannis, five-year extension, $230 million, I believe it is, something like that. There is an opt-out after the fourth year for what that's worth. Uh, between Middleton and we assume them re-signing Drew, the Bucks are kind of pretty much that for a while, which is really good. And before we start diving into the salary stuff, just to say, I think this is great for the NBA. I think this is a win for small market teams. Granted, Giannis is so good. Maybe the Bucks have been transformed into a medium or big market team at this point. I don't know. But, I mean, we saw Paul George won out of Indiana. Anthony Davis won out of New Orleans. We're seeing stuff now of Oladipo maybe wanting out of Indiana. I don't think the Spurs were a small market team because of how successful they were, but still, it was obvious Kawhi wanted to leave there to go to Los Angeles. You can go farther back to Dwight wanting out of Orlando or Mello wanting out of Denver. Granted, there's fine details within all those things. I don't want to act as if the players are at fault for wanting out of their team, but it's just we've seen a lot of... That type of thing. And for Giannis to just be like, nope, Milwaukee is my place, uh, it's cool. And again, I think it's good for the NBA. If he would have left, then I think that would have been the last straw of Supermax contracts. They're probably going to get negotiated out when the next CBA is up anyway. But it definitely would have been done if Giannis was out. So we'll see how that affects things. I think the next thing to think about is... Just what are the Bucks going to look like throughout Giannis's contract? I mean, I mentioned already, between Giannis, Middleton, and Drew, that is going to lock up a lot of their salary. I mean, in 2024, the only players on, on the team are Middleton and Giannis, and they're already at $86 million. So if Drew, who would be, what, 33, I believe, in 2024, is signed to even like a $20 million contract per season, which he's probably going to get a little bit more than that, they're already over $100 million, so they're not going to have a lot of room to make big changes. I mean, they can try to make some trades, but even then with their draft pick situation, because they gave up all those picks for Drew, which, I mean, Giannis stayed, so it was a good move. But they can't trade picks, because then they would be trading picks two years in a row, which, to be honest, I don't think should be a rule, but it's a rule. So the only options they'll have for trading picks is either moving their second rounders, which don't have any value at all after this, or they're just going to have to wait until draft night and then you move the 2021 pick as well as, I don't know, DiVincenzo and whatever else for something. I think that's the next thing to think about is, do they have any young dudes who could grow into being real rotation pieces? I mean, the best bet is DiVincenzo. The Bobby Portis signing is interesting. I think he is either going to be great or horrible for this team because sometimes he's been a little too shot happy in his career, but he has real talent and he's got size and maybe Budenholzer can make him start playing defense like that. The other one is DJ Wilson, who has shot actually a few threes in his career, and he actually wasn't bad in his second season, 36% on about two and a half a game, so... We'll have to see if he can grow into a real guy for them, but given that they are a bit capped out and they don't have as many picks to move just whenever they want to, they are going to need a couple of these guys to become real players. Besides that, it's just mid-levels and biannual exceptions and all that good stuff. They're also going to need Brooke Lopez to hold up, which he's done a pretty good job of, but you know, Lopez is 32 now, and I mean, he's on a pretty affordable contract, but... They are really relying on him to hold up as he gets into his mid-30s here. I think the next thing to look at is the next free agency, which teams were hoping was going to be loaded, and now suddenly, not so much. I mean, as of right now, it's basically Kawhi. And as I said in the Paul George video, the fact that they kept Paul George, it has to help their chances to hold on to Kawhi. I don't think Gobert is going to hit free agency. I think him and the Jazz are going to come to an offer. There is Oladipo, who honestly might be the prize target of the whole thing now. Kyle Lowry, maybe. I mean, 
you could have argued that if Giannis was going to be a free agent, then Lowry would be gone because that would be the Raptors' one real chance of going for Giannis. But now that's gone, of course, so Lowry is probably going to re-sign. There's DeRozan, who, okay, nice, but, I mean, not a franchise changer. Blake Griffin has a player option. We're going to see what he wants to do with that. Mike Conley, eh, cool. Drummond, you know, then Steven Adams. I mean, that's that's kind of it. I mean, if Kawhi chooses to re-sign with the Clippers, then this free agent class that multiple teams saved cap space for is not going to be that great. Unless you get Kawhi, then it's pretty okay. This also means we could be seeing big paydays to guys who should not be getting paid that much. So, Otto Porter, Tim Hardaway, Dennis Schroeder, Evan Fournier, Kelly Oubre. Mentioned DeRozan before, he could get a big one. Uh, We'll just have to see. Teams are going to have a whole bunch of cap space and a bunch of decent players are going to be available. And I think among all those teams, I think Dallas is perhaps the most interesting. Just because they got Luka, of course. So they, as of right now, have about $20 million in space. Or maybe a little more than 20 for next offseason. And they do have James Johnson's contract, which if you didn't know he ended up on Dallas, that's fair. Because I didn't know it until I just looked at it. But you know, he's got a one-year contract. And maybe before the Giannis signing, Dallas would have just let him off the books. But now, maybe they would use his expiring to take on a multi-year contract guy who they think can be good for them. Could even pair up a couple other smaller contracts. They could go with Tim Hardaway Jr. He's a better asset and he makes a little bit more money than James Johnson. The Mavs do actually have some draft picks to trade. They would have to go into the distant future, but... I mean, they've proven over a pretty long period of time they don't really care about draft picks once they got their star player. The other team would be Miami who has a whole bunch of team options and is in a position to give themselves a whole lot of cap space. Granted, Bam's max contract made it a little tougher, but, you know, similar thing here. Maybe they would use Iguodala's expiring to get some longer-term guy, or they could use Dragic's money, maybe Myers Leonard. I think they signed Myers Leonard just because he's a tradable contract at $10 million. And, you know, before Giannis did this, maybe these type of teams wouldn't have wanted to do that. Now, they could still try to make a play in free agency. There's still some guys available, but it really just might be Kawhi or Bust right now. Or somebody just goes all in to trade for Harden. I probably should have mentioned that before seven minutes into the video. But yeah, to get back to the Bucks, it's good for them. It's great for them. It's amazing for them, of course. And... If we just think about them going into the season, am I going to do a team preview? Maybe maybe not, I don't know. I figure they're probably going to be the one seed again. I've already said, I think, if you remove the politics of it all, I think Giannis should be the MVP again. I don't think they're going to give it to him. And we hope that Drew will not fall apart in the postseason like Bledsoe will. And we really hope that Budenholzer will play Giannis over 40 something minutes in playoff games consistently but we got a long way to go until that there's still contenders in the east i have not really thought about who i think is going to come out of the east because to be honest i've talked myself in and out of every single team but the bucks are definitely there a healthy brooklyn that's definitely tough miami with bam and hero getting a little better yeah the celtics i mean if kemba's healthy then that combined with Tatum and Jalen making another jump and, uh, you know, the Celtics probably making a move with that big trade exception. They can be right there even with the loss of Hayward. I think the Sixers got better. The Raptors probably didn't get better based on their roster, but maybe OG will make a jump and Siakam perhaps will be better in the playoffs. So uh, the East should be good, but the Bucks are right there.